This is Good Morning Mumbai with Rishi K. My guest of the day, and I told you about him uh, yesterday if you tuned in, but just to reinforce what he's all about. He's CMD at Godavari Biorefineries. Uh, he's passionate about uh, books. Uh, somebody who's passionate about the environment. Also is president at Somaya Vidya Vihar and chairman of the Somaya Trust. Sami Somaya on the show for the very first time. Wonderful to have you here. Thank you for making it uh, on a very, very rainy morning. <laughs> Thank you, Rishi. I'm going to start with um, with Godavari. Uh, you know, here's, here's a business which is looked upon you as, uh, which you look upon as much more than a business because you're manufacturing sugar, ethanol, biogas, etc. from agricultural resources. And the Lord knows that we need that in this day and age, what with all the Dionar fires and everything that's happening. So talk me through that business. So ours was a traditional sugar business. Godavari Sugar Mills was the name. We changed its name to Godavari Biorefineries. The genesis of that was, I used to always read a magazine called the MIT Tech Review. And in the MIT Tech Review, I used to see how the world was moving way ahead of what we were doing. And I used to keep thinking that we are sitting in a, is it a bullock cart that we are sitting in? I took a year off about 10 or 11 years ago, went to study at Harvard and did a master's in public administration and took a lot of courses at MIT. And that's when I realized that actually the business we were in, which is the use of biomass to make sugar at that time, is also a is also a business that we could use to put like a if it's a bullock cart we could put a rocket engine in that bullock cart came back to india with a hyper enthusiasm about how to go forward and looked at that sugarcane stock and say what can we do with it now we were until that time already using that sugarcane stock to make sugar ethanol and electricity the concept then was well what else can we do with it so we started thinking Maybe we can use that ethanol to make a whole range of different products. So very delighted to say we make products that go into the fragrance business from that. Delighted to say that we can make products that go into the skin care business and the cosmetic business from that. Delighted to say that we've started making products that go into mining, in frothing. How do you and this is used to substitute what is otherwise used by um, chemical roots. What we are doing is we're making green products, products that are renewable that come from the soil and are completely green friendly. So this is the kind of business that we're trying to work towards. We look at Bagas fiber, which we today burn to generate extra electricity. So our sugar factory is extremely efficient. In fact, uh, last week Bharatiya Sugar just announced us as the best sugar factory in South India, in Karnataka. And so the whole idea is how can we now also take that Bagas fiber, not just, just generate power from it, but can we make different products that go into pharmaceuticals, that go into your tableting, for example? Can we make products that go into a whole range of different uh, other kind of sweeteners, products that are used. So the, the whole idea is how can I take that stick of sugarcane and make 20 different products from it? Sugar, we've in fact just launched about a year ago, Jeevana Sugar, which is a branded sugar. We launched Jeevana Salt. We've launched Jeevana Turmeric. The whole, how do we work with farmers? How do we work with farmers so that in the way they work in their soil, we can, so if they intercrop turmeric with cane, can we start also, can the farmer get a greater income from his same piece of land? Uh, we are introducing drip farming to the farmer. Uh, we are making soil testing for the farmer. So that instead of the farmer putting uh, on any basis of any fertilizer company, instead he looks at what his farm needs, what his farm needs to grow, and start putting inputs there. So we're trying to look at it from a very holistic fashion, how the, how the soil is, um, how the what the product from the soil is, how the product is prosperous, how the soil is, if, how, if the earth is prosperous, is the farmer prosperous, we take that product into our factory, can we make a whole range of 15 to 20 products from it, sugar, salt, sugar, ethanol and power are what it, a good sugar factory does, we want to make a whole range of further chemicals from it, and so looking at it in a very holistic fashion. That's Wonderful. I love that uh, term, a holistic fashion. Okay, some 70s disco for you guys. It's Wild Cherry. Play that funky music right after this, a few minutes uh, later. Back with Samir Somaya. It's 9.10 in the morning. My name is Rishi K. Good morning. 70s disco for you. Wild Cherry. Play that funky music. It's 9.13 in the morning. Uh, packed day lined up for you guys. Uh, Anupam Manur from Takshashila University is going to be on the telephone line from Bangalore talking to me about Brexit and uh, some other very important aspects of uh, 
of uh, that will impact Indians doing business in the UK currently uh, if the entire formalities of Brexit were to be seen through. For now, it's uh, Chairman and Managing Director at Godavari Bio, uh, Bio Refineries and uh, a man who's President of Somaya Vidya Vihar and Chairman of the Somaya Trust, Samir Somaya, with me. Uh, Mr. Adi Godra, sitting in the same chair that you were sitting, uh, said to me that one of the biggest things about entrepreneurship is impacting the community where you work in uh, and cross-pollination of ideas. Like an interesting idea that you've developed for the India market to try and expand it to maybe Southeast Asia or other markets. Uh, let's talk about impacting communities, or in particular about uh, education, around the businesses that you're involved in. Thank you. Uh, you know, right, I just talked about my business, Godavari Bar Refineries. So this was started by my grandfather, uh, K.J. Sumaya, in 1939. Very soon after he founded the business, in 1942, he created a primary school in uh, and around the village that was in rural Maharashtra in a town called Kanhe Gaon in Ahmadnagar district in Maharashtra. That's where he started a school. It was an intervention for providing education for the people who came there. That tradition continued later with uh, my father, uh, Dr. S.K. Sumaya, and we've continued that. I'm proud to say that we have about five schools in and around the areas that we do our business in, supporting over 5,000 students um, which come to study over there. These schools are in uh, taught in English, Kannada, and Marathi. And we also support a higher education institution in Kopargaon um, by the same name, Kijasuma College of Arts, Science, and Commerce, which is not run by us. Uh, that has another five, 6,000 students, but we've supported it over the years. So in and around the areas we work in, that's a lot of work we do. We also have a Help a Child program where we provide scholarships to those students who, because of need and merit, um, are where, have great potential to go and study uh, elsewhere, but for not having resources to do so, they find that they cannot. So every year, we bring in 600 additional students, and at this time, we're probably supporting more than 2,000 students in this program. So that's the kind of work we do in and around our areas in the community. Separately, what I just said before, when we try to look at the earth that we work in, when we look at the farmer, we want to make sure that the farmer's soil is healthy um, for the longer term, so it's prosperity. So the kind of interventions are also for his or her social well-being uh, as well. So, this, the, you know, the community has to be prosperous, and we also do a lot of health camps. So we run a medical college here. We often have health camps in which we have our doctors go there, nurses go there, they come, they do their interventions in the area, and where necessary, they bring them back or they take them to a local medical institution for intervention. So that's the kind of work we do. And uh, even in, in urban areas, in Mumbai in particular, uh, the education system and the trust, Vidya Vihar in particular, uh, the, the modus operandi of learning seems to be through exchange. I like the fact that students are going to Cornell, there are exchange programs, there are presentations being made on learnings either way. Talk me through that. Yeah, so this commitment to uh, education, which was founded in 1942 uh, by my grandfather, later on was the formation of Samaya Vidya Vihar in 1959. So since 1959, the interventions in education have grown. And today, the Sumaya Trust, Sumaya Vidya Vihar, the KJ Sumaya Medical Trust runs institutions which have about 39 to 40,000 students. And with education ranging from kindergarten to the PhD and working in fields as diverse as education, language, <coughs> engineering, medicine, management, the humanities, sciences, and all that. So the whole idea is how do we create education which is also experiential? also one which involves collaboration. You talked about exchange programs. Over this past winter, we had about nine students from Cornell University who came to Mumbai, and they went to Dahanu, and they worked in one of our institutions called the Girivanwasi Education Trust. And they worked with students from our polytechnic, our students from our College of Engineering, students from our Environmental Science Department, to try and build a small biodigester to use kitchen waste um, and that would be used to in the kitchen. So, But the whole idea was a collaborative learning experience. It was a cultural learning experience for students from our students from a polytechnic, our students from an environmental science department work with Cornell Chemical Engineers. They work together to find out what kind of digester you need to make, what kind of work you need to do together. If you've got to build a brick wall, how do you build a brick wall together? How do you talk to each other? Do you sit separately? Uh, do you come together and work together? So it's a, it's a full learning experience that we did. We've had other programs in which we've had students 
uh, work with students across the uh, ocean again, across where you come together, you have different teams, um, but you do a common project. Um, so you do a common project with different teachers teaching asynchronously, but how do you provide an education environment that is a little more experiential in nature? And that's what we've been doing at the campus. Wonderful. We're going to go into a song and then some messages. Uh, so you're going to hear us only after a few minutes. Uh, stay busy during that time. Yeah. If you have any comments or questions to ask, you're welcome to do that. Get on SMS. It's one space, your comment or your query and name to 53650. 53650 is the in-studio SMS line. I'll read it out on air of course on twitter as well as facebook uh, these are our coordinates it's at hri shikay on twitter you can follow their handle you'll see pictures on the timeline which we're going to put up of sami sumai and studio and you could uh, tweet back reactions right under on facebook there's a page called hri shikay there again you can uh, post back reactions under the picture facebook.com slash radio one mum is our official page the most liked facebook page across all radio stations in mumbai city we're very proud of that you can like that page post the comment on the timeline inbox see you in a bit with Samir Sumaya it's Lionel Richie dancing in the ceiling at 920 my name is Rishi K post to some messages and back this is good morning Mumbai with Rishi K thank you for being tuned in all you shiny happy people it's 931 in the morning Samir Sumaya is here talking about his diverse career in uh, renewable energy in uh, uh, biorefineries education medicine the whole gamut the Dalai Lama was a, a special guest, your special guest, a couple of years ago. And uh, there was a lot of stuff that was said in the media. And what I loved about it is, is that they were actually teaching sessions at Vidya Vihar. Talk me through that. I mean, I know it's been a couple of years, but I'd love to hear. And I'm sure everybody was listening. So this was uh, an opportunity that came up. Uh, I was in New Delhi and um, there was a group that was invited uh, that had um, got his willingness so that he would come and speak in Mumbai. So together we thought we'd do it together. She needed a location to do it. And we chose, um, I said Sumai Vidya Vihar and the Dalai Lama has been to our campus twice before. He knew my father well, or my father knew him well. And uh, so he consented to come and it would be a teaching program. So his topic was living, loving, laughing and dying. And his he taught over four days, morning and afternoon. And we, we did something unique there uh, with our Center for Buddhist Studies. We have the Kijasama Center for Buddhist Studies. And we said that it would be open to anyone who would come, or who would like to come. And we did it in the summertime, so our hostels would be empty. So people who came from rural India and needed a place to stay, we also made their hostel available. Lovely. It was wonderful to have him with us. And we had Anita Dudhane, who was one of the coordinators from the other side. And uh, we had um, Aspi Mistri, who coordinated it and Supriya Rai from our institution. And the Dalai Lama was there. He inaugurated the Sumaya School, which we run. He visited Kitab Khana as well. Uh, it was wonderful to have him there. We got a lot of learnings from him. Our students, when they spoke to him, it's incredible the kind of um, questions that he provoked from them. Or they would come and ask him about their deal issues, such as if somebody uh, hits me, should I? what should my response be? I still remember one of his response is saying that an action deserves a reaction but never hold any ill will towards the actor uh, try and differentiate between the actor and the action Wow! Um, he also spoke uh, to great lengths about uh, being patient and not getting angry uh, he said that um, it's the cultivation of patience it's the cultivation of keeping cool uh, there was lots of lots of learnings that came from his stay with us and most of all, um, I strongly feel that when he was uh, on our campus and he was he was leaving uh, on the last day, he, he was so uh, so wonderful because there were a lot of questions asked of him on what his thought processes were, and he just made a statement to me saying that uh, I know you're a uh, on the day he was leaving, just five minutes before leaving, he said I know you're a Krishna Bhakt, but if there's anything I said here which uh, you didn't like. I, I hope I didn't say anything oh, like sweet. that. And I thought it was incredible, <laughs> incredible. for a man of his stature <laughs> to say something of that. Yeah. Sense. But on, on the other hand, yeah. uh, you you are really a world citizen. I mean, uh, you're doing considerable work with the Vatican too. Mm. So uh, talk me through that. No, we have a center called the KJ Sumaya Bharatiya Skansiti Pitam, Andha Sumaya Vidya Vya, mm. that has been doing a lot of work of study and research in the Vedas, the Upanishads, mm. uh, on a lot of ancient Hindu philosophy. 
and through that institution we've often taught indian religious traditions to people who come on our campus for that we've often brought in uh, so if we are teaching islam if we are teaching christianity if we are teaching judaism we would bring in practitioners from that religion wow. so through that relationship uh, started a relationship with uh, some research with universities in the vatican especially a university called the pontifical university urbaniana mm. and over the last 10 years we've done a lot of collaborative projects with them um working with them working with their faculty trying to understand or find common ground rather than institutions that try to um uh, you know rather than focusing on differences we're trying to focus on uh, not to say that we are one and the same that's not the point but to at least find out um what are the issues where we can find common ground i think my father was a big proponent of that kind of thought process that we must engage with the world Yeah. Vishal Gondal is one of the foremost entrepreneurs of our time you know India Games now runs Goki uh, the the wellness initiative hey Samir howdy tell us more about your startup initiative there's a startup is it that's is it? right yeah so <laughs> hi Vishal um so we um we have a college of engineering and a few years ago uh, two or th- we have a wonderful project in the college of engineering which is uh, making lot many students are engaged in making all kinds of cars like there's an orion race car group there is a uh, baha off road car group couple of students came to me and said after they finished that they didn't want to go to the corporate world and become uh, normal guys they wanted to do something creative as they'd been doing before So I had recently returned as I said about 10 years ago from and I'm talking about 5 years ago 6 mm-hmm. years ago so when I I was the MIT was fresh in my mind I'd seen a lot of work at the media lab so I told these students how about we start an incubator so we started something called the riddle which is research ideas innovation design labs nice um, <laughs> and we we created something like that and I'm delighted to say in the last 2 to 3 years it has taken off we started things called the maker mela last year we had more than um you know f- few hundred entries from students all over the country making incredible things there was a group of students on our own campus who made a chessboard uh, which is a physical chessboard where students where the chessboard pieces move so if you're playing with the chess it's not like a computer it is a computer but it you feel like you're playing a ghost because the piece actually moves in front of you thought controlled wheelchair so the whole idea was how do we convert this into entrepreneurship and government of india has recently just given us a 5 uh, crore grant to further take our op- um, entrepreneurship opportunities further today we have 21 startups there and at least 100 uh, students will do internship opportunities from our campus in this riddle incubator plus many of these um, startups are incubated by some of our students um, but you know so that's the kind of uh, opportunity that we're doing on the campus this is part of the action learning that we want to create vishal gundal that answers your question my friend have a wonderful day Some punk rock in the form of the offspring and original prankster 937 Samir Somaya's in studio right after this a few minutes uh we're back with him we're going to talk about his email to students the offspring original prankster you know some of these bands they start off as being college bands in the US and uh, look where they they take their career graph in studio with me is Samir Somaya he's CMD at Godavari Biorefineries we've been talking about uh, manufacture of sugar ethanol biogas etc from agri resources then is Somaya Vidya Vihar is Somaya Trust uh, for all of you who tuned in late uh, there's some wonderful lessons to be picked up here Now you write a, is it a daily email or is it like once a week or is it a once a month uh, to all your students at Somaya talk me through that it's not necessarily um, that there is no regularity to it okay when you but, think of it yeah. but it often happens maybe two or three times a month for example last uh, about two weeks ago i was in our uh, nareshwari which is in the hanu we run a tribal school there for 800 students much of the students come from the tribal villages in the area we had a uh, when i was leaving uh, there was a rallis in that given us some help for creating a separate library space so it was very wonderful to be there i was there with the rallis people it's a very nice space the students out of the 800 500 stay there uh, food and board is also provided by us and education is fully free the state supports us with the grant for the teachers in the in the college in the school when i was leaving there were a bunch of parents and they asked me where um there's no place for my child to study because much of the primary education in in in, in maharashtra is up to the 8th standard mm. there are not too many schools that go beyond the 8th in the area we are one of the few so we had the parents who said well our kids have finished the 8th we've gone to the three or four schools which go to the 9th onwards we've come here as well and all these schools are full 
what shall we do so the challenge for us was what do you tell them in a in a city where you have 15 million or 20 million it's easy for you to say well we're full go find another school but in a village environment where the ref- responsibility is not as diffuse as it is in a city you can't really say not my problem go find another mm. school so i came back and my usual letters to my students so i sent a letter off to all the 40000 people the staff and students as to this challenge and how can you just say not my problem and so this is the kind of things that i would write something that goes on or recently we opened a casualty uh, which is also I'll, i'll come to that but in this just when i wrote these these emails every time i get about 15 or 20 emails back some of them are saying oh wonderful you're doing great work you know the kind of uh, which is which not really uh, but the, in that there are about 10 emails which are wonderful in which some student is getting uh, connected and he says well have you thought about this have you thought about one person wrote back in fact uh, and, you know have, have, i don't know what to do but i'm happy to go and teach the students if i can i don't have a solution to your problem but i'm good at maths or i'm good at this can i go and help the students and teach that so you get these kind of responses back so that's what i write to the students often on recently in our hospital we um, opened up a casualty center it's about a 20 bed casualty it's beautifully run it feels like it can work as an icu driven by an experience by my uh, son who was 4 years old when he fell ill when we were in canada on a holiday and we had to drive him into a casualty in the us and my father who slipped fell and then ultimately passed away in australia but we had to take him to a casualty there as well and so we thought about how do we create a casualty uh, here uh in india which would be of that kind of quality and we've just opened it up uh, the rotary club of uh, uh queens necklace helped us also for that um and it's just a wonderful casualty so again i would share how it's a personal experience that one feels when one is personally touched if it is my f- your son or your father and then you try to create an experience like that so i think that's the kind of if you dream it how do you participate in making it happen so these are the emails that that um i would send out sometimes reflecting on student responses ask them uh what needs to be done what their opinions are faculty responses staff responses and it, with every email that i send out i think i get some very interesting emails on the responses in fact one email i got was fantastic by a nutritionist working in our hospital and she gave a lot of interesting ideas not necessarily connecting to the email i sent but in a tangential way connecting to it Mm. Michael Coelho thank you so much for your uh, tweet he says amazing commendable business outlook Samir Sumaya incredible inclusion at every level heartening and empowering listen today thanks very much Michael for that comment Vishnu Nivasan has a question question to Samir Sumaya sugarcane has been held as the water guzzling monster partly responsible for vidarbha would be interesting to get Mr Sumaya's view you know i Actually, when I saw, I I also uh, teach at Cornell University and teach about agriculture and renewable resources, and uh, I teach a, to- a lot of what I do. And from what I do is take sugar cane and make products from it. For a long time, as technical people, we focused on our factories, and in in my case also in Godavari bio refineries, we've looked at how we can reduce the consumption of water. Uh, after much study we realize that as much as we reduce the consumption of water inside the factory a much larger percentage of water all uh, was consumed in the farms to cultivate the cane so the question is how do you now address that um so the way we've started looking at that is we've started pushing the cultivation of drip farming and the use of drip would reduce the consumption of water by 40 or 50% and the other thing that we need to do is start looking at whether you can start harvesting more water when it rains um so bo- i think so the answer needs to be because that one thing that we cannot escape is the fact that the sugar industry contributes a lot to the rural economy and rural livelihood so how do you create an economy in which that economy is sustained and at the same time water which is a precious resource is available to all for the sustenance of life and livelihood the way we are trying to do it as i said is trying to focus on water harvesting as well as the reduction in water use so these are the two ways that we are trying to 
to work with it and also to improve yields of farmers so if you can improve yields today average yields of farmers are in the range of about 40 tons 35 tons per acre if you could actually with proper agronomic practices we think that yield can go up to 60 or 70 tons per acre so now what you have is a threefold approach you have half the amount of water required you have twice the yield that you could get and you also save who's the waterman of india who also visited our campus last year and i also took him with me to one of our rural areas to try and ask to take his idea and pick his brains on what we should do that that's what we're doing wonderful madhav and chiki much love thank you for tuning in mohan kapoor i'm sorry buddy but i've got to read out this message uh, mohan is one of the most cerebral actors of our generation uh, what a man, Samir Somaya. What a legacy. Thank you for bringing him to us. Love and regards. And he says, please don't announce it. Sorry, I've not been obedient as far as that is concerned. Sting, Cowboy Song, your last opportunity to get comments and questions in because we're at 9.49. We're going to say bye-bye to Samir Somaya up ahead. One space, your comment and name or your question and name to 53650. 53650 is the in-studio SMS line. Tag at HRISHIKAY. Follow that handle. Tweet out the comment or question. HRISHIKAY on Facebook. You could post or inbox or right under the picture and facebook.com slash radio1.mum our official page like the page post the comment or question in the timeline or inbox see you in a bit I'm Rishi K this is Good Morning Mumbai with Rishi K what an engaging hour in studio with Samir Somaya but like all good things it's got to come to an end we're up ahead Brexit talk Wimbledon roundup from last night, a little bit on the football and more, the Euro Championship. So it's still a packed show to 12 noon. So please don't tune out. Yeah, Madhu Asdatta, fantastic initiative, Jeevana Somaya. Uh, Samir Somaya, so heartening to hear this interview. Thank you very much, Madhu. Amit Govind, fab person Samir Somaya is. Where can we get in touch with him? Does he respond to email regularly? Amit, just as long as you're not uh, uh, mailing him to, and asking him for a job. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want my, my guests to go through that. But yeah, is there an email ID that he can write to? Yeah, yeah it's Samir, S-A-M-I-R, at Sumaya, S-O-M-A-I-Y-A dot com. Okay, you got that there. Pooja Trehan Damecha. Hey, Pooja. Rishi K, fabulous speaker, Samir Sumaya. How can I help to teach at the tribal school? Great initiative. I'll, uh, if you email me at the email address I've just given you, I will definitely put you in touch with Patricia, who helps with the, who's the director of the tribal school, and we would be delighted with your help and assistance. Um, Sony Thakkar, awesome guest today. Thank you very much, so- uh, Sony. Lakshmi Govindrajan, Samir Somaya is my jija, and both of you are my favorites. What fun. Thank you very much. And uh, there's a smile on Samir's face as he listens to that. Okay, let's talk about healthcare. And uh, what are you excited about as far as the sector is concerned and some, some highlights as far as Sumaya is concerned? No, so we've been, uh, we're a teaching hospital and the whole idea is how do we transform that teaching. So the teaching hospital, the teaching of medical care is going very well. The dream is that if you go into a U.S. medical teaching hospital system, it's normally the place of the best care provided to all. Uh, in our society, the people who can pay normally don't go to a teaching hospital. So the environment that we dream of is how do we be a center for care for all those, for those who cannot afford it and those who also who can afford it. So that's a transformation we seek to make driven by a lot of personal experience we've had. Mm. So that's the basis on which we've just, uh, you know, inaugurated, I said, a fantastic casualty emergency right in our hospital last week. And we've also created a very wonderful center for Ayurveda care, which also we've got running. And next month, we open a center for cardiac care and super speciality. That's what we're doing. A labor of love for your your better half and yourself, Kitab Khana. And uh, my God, it's really grown to be one of those cultural hub points of the city over the less than a decade. Yeah, it's only six years old and oh. five, five or six years, five years old, in fact. We used to travel the world and we used to find out that there are beautiful bookshops, take the Harvard Coop in Cambridge, uh, go to London and so many lovely bookshops and coming back to India, we'd find that there are no such wonderful places to read Um, and bookshops are becoming more of uh, department stores inside. So we wanted to create a a refuge. In fact, uh, from the movie Mossam, there's a beautiful song, Dil Dhunta Hai, (laughs) (laughs) So that was a kind of dream I spoke to my father-in-law. And he's an architect from Ahmedabad and I asked him if he would create such a center for us. My wife and I, we, we wanted to create a center where children would also find a place. And, and my, my daughter, Gayatri, she really helped curate, in fact, the children's section. And my, my daughter, uh, my wife, you know, she the way she's kind of 
um, dreamt up further to take that place forward is fantastic. The other thought we also had was is for um, books of Hindi, Marathi, Gujarati also being taught. And I would think that if my kids go to a bookstore, they'll think that the only literature coming out is that in English. And that's really not the case. I think our country and culture is full of fantastic, rich literature in our languages. And that's where we also have a lot of books in Hindi, Marathi, Gujarati, uh, Sanskrit as well, a few in Urdu, and we need to really add to that. So that's that's the kind of space we wanted to create. Well, Sanjana Kapoor and uh, Samira Iyengar, both friends of mine, speak so highly of everything that's happening there uh, as regards Junoon, some wonderful partnerships mm-hmm. uh, there. So perfect excuse for us uh, to get your wife into studio very, very soon. Well, uh, even though you didn't uh, make a hue and cry and a fuss about being on air, lots of your friends and family are listening, coincidentally. Jatin Thakkar, who I remember came in a, a few years ago, very interesting business venture uh, called Nobacco. Yeah, he also makes a fantastic turmeric product as well. Fantastic. Yeah. So Jatin says, Samir Somaya is my cousin. Much love to him. So Jatin's also mm-hmm. tuned in. Uh, wonderful. Before you go, black belt in Taekwondo. Who would have thought? <laughs> Still managed to practice? <laughs> well, I've practiced for about 20, 20 years. I just stopped about a year or two ago. I still play squash and I swim and I do yoga every day. Wonderful. Thanks so much for your time. It was absolutely wonderful. I look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on the air. Aussie Strong Stress, uh, Natalie Imbruglia. This is Wishing I Was Here. Uh, my name is Rishi K. Up ahead, football, Wimbledon, Brexit. Lots more to come.